Welcome to Tackle Talk Live, a show dedicated to making you a better angler. Your host, b General Manager Kevin Jean and Daiwa Ranger Pro Staffer Steve Graff will keep you up to date on what's happening on the best lakes in the Arklatex region. With a primary focus on Sam Rayburn and Toledo Bim, two guys who have fished at a high level with Pro-Am experience with ABA, BFLs, Toyota Series, and BASS Opens. Anglers with a wealth of knowledge and willing to share. So pull up a chair kick back and see why so many anglers watch Tackle Talk Live. Here are your hosts, Kevin Jean and Steve Graff. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tackle Talk Live. I'm Cambridge Pro Staffer Steve Graff, along with BM General Manager, the one and only Kevin Jean. Kevin, today, you, you, you know, Kevin, both of us have been in tournaments where some guys will just literally dominate. I mean, you come in, you're like, good God, what were they doing that we weren't doing? Well, today we've got the win one of the members of the winning team of the Outlaw Outdoors tournament on today. We got Danny Isles coming on to talk about their dominating win. Over 22 pound victory, Kevin. And in, in a one day event, that's just absolutely unheard of. But these two guys are sticks at Sam Rayburn. Well, yeah, and Steve, I, I feel like they do this every year. There's one tournament, Danny and Brian just absolutely annihilate everybody in it, and they have a, you know, 35 to a 45. I think they had 48 a couple years ago. We had them on tackle, had Danny on tackle yeah. talk live then. Yeah. Um, they do this once a year. They they've got something figured out pre spawn that the fish are doing, and we're not gonna get it out of Danny today, guys. No, I'm, no, not, no. I'm not gonna sit here and say we're we, we're gonna hear how it all went down. We're not, and. For, you know, for good reason, because uh, they're winning a lot of money free spawn every year doing this. But, you know, I really I want to weigh in by noon. Uh, I want to talk to Danny a little bit about that, about how fast all of this went down. I know they had a 10 pounder. Um, a lot of things we want to kind of, you know, discuss with Danny that he'll talk about. Um, but a lot of things he won't talk about as well. Well, and he did. He threw caution to the wind and said, look, Steve, said, I, you know, I'll talk to you all. We'll, we'll do the interview. He said, and I said, well, what about this? We'll talk about your win, but let's go in a different direction. Let's talk about your approach to Rayburn has changed in the last 10 years. He said, absolutely. That'd be a great topic. So I'm looking forward to hearing Danny talk about how much the lake has changed, whether it's been fishing pressure, whether it's all the grass that's in the lake now, what has changed over the last 10 years uh, that has caused anglers to have to kind of refigure out Rayburn again, because Let's be honest, Kevin, with a lot of the weights that have come in over the last two or three weeks, there's a drop-off, a hard drop-off after the first four or five guys. I mean, it's dropping off. I think if you ate 12 pounds both days in the uh, uh, Toyota Series, you got to check. Yeah. And, you know, but, Steve, these fish now, they're also getting a lot thrown out. It's been almost 60-degree water temps the start of the year, beginning of the year, and then all of a sudden we get this cold snap that hit them in the head with some cold. winds and yeah. all the rain and muddy water. So these fish are scattered. Um, yeah. It's a lot harder to locate them and locate the big schools. And when you do, you can catch them like some guys have. Uh, Dakota Ebear, that won the Toyota event last week, caught 32 on the final day. Um, there was a 28-pound bag, a 26 and a 25 weighed in the Toyota on the final day. Yeah. Um, so it, it went down last weekend, Steve. These big fish, I, in my opinion, they grouped up. Um, they pulled out into the ditches, the drains, the creek bends um, because of this cold weather, and they have grouped up. Um, I know there was three bags over 30 pounds waiting right up here on Caney Lake this past weekend. Yeah. So yeah. it went down this past weekend, and I think you'll continue to see uh, for the next couple of weeks some more big bags get caught, including this coming weekend, uh, BFL and Toledo Bend. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, also, we're going and we're going to talk about the recent rains in our region. And for guys that like myself, I like to get in the bushes, especially on Toledo Bend this time of year when the water's up in the bushes. Well, folks, get ready because it's on the rise. Both lakes are on the rise and had a hard rise this week with more rain coming. So it's possible and conceivable. And we'll give you those updates as to exactly what the water level is right now, what how the lakes are rising, where they may be, say come Saturday, because more rain is on the way, and that, could, that, that that's good news for a lot of guys that like to go to shallow water. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we're going to have Danny Isles, the winner of the Outlaw Outdoors tournament between him and Brian Shook. We'll have Danny on to talk about their winning weight and 
how their approach to Sam Rayburn has changed over the last 10 years. You're watching Tackle Talk Live. Toledo Health is a full-service primary and acute care clinic. Nurse practitioners Jarrett Rule and Melissa Vines bring quality health care that's needed and convenient to the area. Whether it's a stomach virus or a hook in your hand, Toledo Health Care will try and meet all your health care needs. Appointments available and walk-ins are always welcome. So the next time you're feeling down at Toledo Bend, stop by Toledo Health Care. Located on Highway 6, just south of Toledo Town, or you can call 318-508-5323. For all your boating needs, check out Shreveport's newest marine dealer, The Boat Shop. Raymond Kidd and his great staff will take care of all your engine repair needs or anything else that needs fixing. A certified Yamaha Mercury dealer, they carry two of the best fishing boats on the market from Sea Arc and Camus. The Boat Shop is never short on trade-ins as they're always willing and able to make you the best deal possible. Looking for great boat accessories? They're a full support garment and Minn Kota dealer. So the next time you're in the market for a new or used boat or maybe you just need to service the boat you have let the boat shop fix you up to learn more call 318-402-0399 or go to shreveportboatshop.com the next time you're on I-49, just south of Natchitoches, Louisiana, stop by Cypress Knee Outdoors. A store within a store, Cypress Knee is located inside 3J's 4-Way. Whether you need gas, food, or drinks, they have it. While you're there, check out Cypress Knee Outdoors and pick up whatever hunting or fishing tackle you need. Top name brands like Strike King, Santones, Pro, or the number one soft plastics made, v &M. On the hunting side, they carry guns from Mossberg, Winchester, and Remington. Plus, they've got a great supply of ammunition. Let John Abram and his staff show you everything Cypress Knee has to offer. Located just one mile east of 127 on I-49 or call 318-238-HUNT. You're watching Tackle Talk Live, a show dedicated to making you a better angler. Now back to the guys with all the inside scoop, Kevin Jean and Steve Graff. You're watching Tackle Talk Live. Thank you for tuning us in. This segment presented by Toledo Health, the boat shop, 3J's Four Away, home of Cypress Knee Outdoors. You're coming up I-49. Make sure to pull off the interstate right there, just south of Natchitoches, and uh, Cypress Knee is right there off the highway, less than a mile. Got a great selection of bait and tackle, especially V&M product. All the V&M product you would want is right there, Cypress Knee Outdoors. Check it out. Today, we've got on the phone, we've got our special guest, Danny Isles, part of the winning team between him and Brian Shook. They won with a total of 41.56 in the Outlaw, Outlaw Outdoors team tournament trail, uh, tournament number one. And uh, Danny, man, congratulations to you guys. And you didn't just win, Danny. <laughs> you absolutely blew the field away. The closest team to you has been the hottest team on Sam Rayburn for the last uh, three weeks is Michael Fesco and Holden Ashworth, who finished second to y'all with a little over 19 pounds. But, dude, a 22-pound win, that, that just really has to make you feel good. Yeah, you know, honestly, it was kind of an accident and a complete blessing for us. And hats off to those other two guys because they've consistently been catching them this year. We just yeah. sort of stumbled into them and caught one giant bag. They've been doing it every single weekend when they go out, and that is probably tougher to do than getting lucky one day. That's well, a, Danny, I will say this. They have, been, they have been catching them this year, but, I mean, you guys just weighed in 41.56. Uh, Danny, this is something y'all do at least once a year, and I was kind of talking about that before y'all come on. Y'all got something figured out um, pre-spawn. I mean, you know where they're holding. You know how to catch them. Man, hats off to you guys there. 4156 is a sack with a 10 pounder. Um, and I know, Danny, I know y'all been fishing a lot of the big tournaments, belt tournament. Where'd y'all finish in the belt tournament? Uh, we ended up in third. Third, and, yeah. Uh, that I was know y'all did of really a roller well. Coaster, though. Yeah, yeah. It, belt was for everybody. Um, and, Danny, this, this past weekend in Outlaw Outdoors, I know you guys weighed in pretty early. Uh, take us through the morning as far as got out there, how fast the fish catches went down, how quick you caught them. Was it all on one spot? Was it multiple spots? Just kind of take us through the morning. 
Yeah, sure. No, we, we've been very fortunate. We fished a long time and we've had some really good days. I wouldn't say we do it every year, but probably every two or three years we seem to connect with them. And uh, we knew going into this that water temperature was dropping and the lake's been fishing kind of tough, but we kind of do do pretty well when it gets real cold and gets tough on everybody else. I don't really know why that is, but it just sort of works out for us. And uh, we also knew looking at the forecast, we really probably only had about three, three and a half, maybe four hours of good fishing yeah. before the wind got blowing so hard we couldn't couldn't fish offshore where we liked to. And uh, so we kind of had a game plan to run a handful of places as fast as we could and try to run into them while they were maybe biting somewhere. And I think we fished probably two hours, two and a half hours before we had a limit, we caught a couple of little ones here or there, like a five pounder and maybe a six pounder. And then probably about ten thirty, ten forty, we pulled up on a, a kind of a, a brush pile or close to a brush pile and caught four big ones. We already had one good one, but from about I'd say ten forty five to eleven o'clock we caught the four biggest ones we had. So it happened really quick once we got around them. But um, we didn't really know they were there before the tournament. We just sort of run into them during the day, which usually is when you end up with the best weights anyway. Um, yeah. So we just, you know, like I say, stumbled into the right place at the right time. And Danny, uh, I know you don't want to get specific with what what bait you were throwing or anything like that. Can, can we maybe get a little bit with technique? Were you dragging a rig? Were you, were you, were you, what, what were you, what were you doing? Uh, I mean, was it something that uh, very few people are doing uh, right now? Or, or is it just location? No, was the I whole mean, thing? nothing real secret. I think I would imagine most people are probably throwing the same baits. We threw a Carolina rig and a six cents crankbait. Uh, yeah, we actually yeah. caught several of these we weighed in on the Carolina rig, but uh normally we try to just throw the crankbait but for whatever reason we hadn't been able to catch them that well on it if you do catch one they're on the back hook and just not eating it good yeah so uh we we try to drag a little more this time around well let's let's okay we kind of wrapped up that event now i know you got other events coming up but me and you were talking on the phone yesterday danny and and the one thing we talked about was how Rayburn has changed over the last, say, 10 years and, and how today Angler's approach to Rayburn is, has had to change as well uh, to, compared to what it was 10 years ago. Uh, give us your thoughts on Sam Rayburn. And is it pressure? Is it all the grass in the lake now that has made guys change their approach? What, 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 what's the main reason you think people are having to change their approach to Sam Rayburn? Well, I think it's a combination of things, and granted, I'm an engineer. I'm not a biologist, so my takings are guesses that I kind of think I can make sense of, but they may not make sense to someone who's an expert in you know, fish and the way they move and act. And I kind of said it earlier, I, I think I know we do best when we just sort of run into the fish during the day. We don't really know where they're at when we launch the boat. We just go fishing and try to get bit and then see what happens after we get a bite. And then mm-hmm. um, you try to pattern them on the day you're there. Um, I, I think used to, you know, I've been fishing maybe 14, 15 years now. And used to, you could go practice three, four, five weeks before a tournament, find some fish, and then go back and catch them again. Um, but that doesn't happen anymore. And I do think a lot of it has to do with fishing pressure. But I think some of it may have to do with genetics, too. I want to say, you know, over the years, they stock mostly Florida bass, and I think they may be more finicky and move more than our native bass did. Mm -hmm. That's 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 just kind of my thought and guess on it. I I think as that percentage of Florida's in them increases, it makes them harder to consistently, you know, track down and catch in the same areas. Danny, I know you guys have fished a lot this year, uh, and because and I know in, in the um, last few times we've talked to you, you've kind of said the same thing. We kind of find them during the tournament. Just wondering between Brandon Belt, uh, Bass Champs, and the Outlaw, this the three tournaments I know y'all fished this year. How many practice uh, days have y'all had? 
Well, we didn't actually fish bass champs. We both had other oh, okay. obligations. I think my partner had some family stuff, and then I had a medical thing I had to get taken care of. Yeah. But days on the water, probably, uh, we probably fished two weeks since December, I would guess. Right. Uh, somewhere in there. Danny, your opinion, though, so much is made today out of the forward-facing sonar. Your, your opinion on... Uh, and that's been you talked yesterday. You're you're not a huge forward face guy. You'll use it as a tool, you know, in certain situations. But how much is that having an effect? Because talking to some guides like Daryl Gleason, Justin Cooper, guys like that, a guide all the time. The days of getting over the fish, and all of a sudden you're gonna try to. They just disappear now. They they don't want no part of anything over the top of them. Or now even out in front, they'll they'll run away from that sonar. Are you seeing that? Uh, personally, no, because I don't have it on my boat. Uh, oh, so I wouldn't wow. know what they're doing. <laughs> I wouldn't know what they're doing from it or around it anyway. You know, I grew up without that stuff, just fishing, and I kind of sort of hard-headed and set in the, the old ways of looking around for them, so I'd tend to idle a little bit, fish a little bit, and just keep going like that. Uh, I do have a Hummingbird 360 that I use exclusively. But I, I don't have much experience with the, you know, live target or active target or anything like that. Well, it's funny you should bring that up because I've talked to several pros that are using both. And, and I said, if you had to eliminate one and you only had one choice, one unit, which one would you give up? They said, I'd give up that forward facing sonar in a heartbeat. Do not take my 360. And I was a little surprised yeah. by that. Answer. Yeah, you can put me in that bucket for sure. I mean, I, it's a choice on my part not to have the forward facing sonar. I think it'd do more damage for me than good. But well, even the guests we've had on the last few weeks, Holden Ashworth has said the same. He's a young high, just right out of high school, but he has really become an expert with it. And he told us, Kevin, he told us live right here that hey, I get too caught up in it. It's hurt me on days when it, I I didn't really shouldn't have used it. Is it is definitely easy to do, and I, I've I've done it in the past as well. You kind of get too zoned in, and and that's what I was going to say. Hats off to Danny and them. I mean, this is you know one of the bigger stringers we've heard of of in a long time from guys that have not had yeah. forward facing sonar, doing it the old school way. So tournaments can still be won, absolutely, still fishing that way. Yeah, and, and, and Danny, oh, yeah. you're the first. Now, I, the I will say something else about that. There are some days where, in Brian and I fish this way, we fish for big bites and try to catch big fish. We have far more days where we catch nothing, one or two, than we do where we catch five. The days we catch five, it looks miraculous, but a lot of times we don't catch but you know the five we weigh in. Uh, right. And all these yeah. other days that we're out there struggling, those guys are consistently catching fish and good bags using that stuff. Yeah. It is a yeah. tool, but it's a, a good tool on some days. So you don't see yourself uh, going out there and spending that kind of money on a unit that you, you just you just rather not do that right now, right? Yeah, that's pretty much where I fall in line with it. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. Because Kevin, I think of all the people we've had on, he's the first guy that said he doesn't have it. No, yeah, he is. I mean, and that's what I'm saying. And again, not saying every weekend it's one using it, but some people utilize it some way. Whether it's knowing exactly where that brush pile is at, they utilize it some way. So he's definitely the first one we've had that you know just doesn't have it on the boat. Yeah, yeah. Well, Danny, Kevin, you got anything else? No, I think we. Congratulations, 1056 Big Fish this past weekend, Danny. Congratulations to you guys, and, and good luck for the rest of the season. All right. Thank you, all, and we can use all the luck we can get. I know that. Well, I'll put it this way, Kevin. When you're back in your boat in the water at Raven, and you look to your right, and, and Danny Isles is back in his boat in the water, you're looking at him and say, well, there's the guy I got to beat today. So, Danny. Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, I, I do, and uh, you guys are as good a sticks over there as there is at Sam Rayburn and, and anywhere else you go. And uh, But congratulations again. We appreciate you coming on with us today, and uh, looking forward to talking to you in the future, man. Uh, yeah, because that means we had a good weekend, so I uh, hope yeah, we thanks, talk to you all again, too. All, all right, thank man. Thank you, buddy. All right.
Danny Isles. Uh, appreciate Danny taking time out of his day. Uh, he's right there at work. And uh, again, Kevin at, caught me off guard a little bit. No forward facing sonars even on his boat. And we're talking yeah. a guy that knows what he's doing. No, and I knew that. I knew Danny doesn't. He doesn't. He he does it the old school way, and it works. Again, he, yeah. I, I swear he catches one of these bags every year. Um, not same time of year or anything. He just they have figured out how to get those big fish bites um, on Sam Raven. Interesting to hear that it was around some brush piles yeah. uh, and throwing a Carolina rig. I'm surprised we got that much out of him. So. Um, interesting to hear you know how it went down how quick it went down yeah. um Steve, you know what i took away from that though what? He caught four around a brush pile in a brush yeah. pile yeah now so that's two weekends we've heard michael fesco and them said they caught five yeah. they caught 26 pounds out of one pile yeah danny i was just told us he caught four of their five out of a pile around a pile so th that that's what caught me off guard by what all he just said right there. Yeah. This, that is very rare, in my opinion, for Sam Rayburn to catch that many good fish out of one pile. Yeah. Uh, and, and especially right now with the grass as strong as it is right now over there at Rayburn, a lot of grass over there. You think more of those fish might be, and, and, and then some of them may be, some of the bigger fish may be deep in those grass. Uh, uh sloughs and those cuts they may be on the edge of that grass deep in the grass and 12 foot of water but uh i, I don't know I, I just think once the water stabilizes again as we pointed out how the rain has really uh kind of messed things up a little bit over there and it's been a cold rain so water temperature two weeks ago when i was there it was 56 57 i bet it's low 50s right now probably 52 degrees 51 52 if i just had to guess but it's cold yeah, it's definitely colder. And uh, so, but anyway, we're going to take one more short break and we're going to come back. We get the final results. We'll go with the final results of the Outdoor Outlaw. We'll also go with the final results of the uh, Toyota Series. We got that right here as well. And, uh, and we'll tell you about the lake levels. All this and much more when we return with more Tackle Talk Live. Are you looking for the finest custom-built rods ever made? Then look no further than Pride Rods. Fishing rods built to last and made in Montgomery, Texas. Constructed by Mr. Billy Kistler with the finest Gary Loomis North Fork composite blanks available. They offer a complete line of both spinning and casting rods for both fresh and salt water. Pride Rods do more than pass the eye test. They excel in performance as well. Ask your local tackle dealer if they carry Pride Rods and pick one up and try it for yourself. You'll see why so many anglers are using pride rods to learn more go to priderods.com or call 832-418-6040 the next time you're headed for Toledo Bend or Sam Rayburn, stop by Keith's Toledo Bend Tackle. They have an awesome supply of everything you'll need to catch the big ones. Whether your trip calls for bass fishing, white perch tackle, catfish bait, or the ultimate fighting shiners, Keith's Tackle has you covered. Keith and former Elite Series pro Ben Matsubu also have the latest information on what, how, and where you need to be fishing on Sam Rayburn or the Bend. So for all your tackle needs, check out Keith's Toledo Bend Tackle located just off Highway 21 on the Texas side of Toledo Bend or call 409-625-0181. The Lakes Insurance Agency is an independent insurance agency that has been taking care of Texans insurance needs for over 25 years, offering auto, homeowners, boat, RV, life, health, and commercial insurance. Owner Clark Moore is a local guide and tournament angler who understands your insurance needs and wants to be your go-to guy for all your insurance needs. For a free quote, give him a call and see why so many Texans trust the Lake Insurance Agency. Located at 805 Southeast Stalling Suite 3, Nacogdoches, Texas, or or call 936-205-4467. You're watching Tackle Talk Live, a show dedicated to making you a better angler. Now back to the guys with all the inside scoop, Kevin Jean and Steve Graff. Hey, thank you for watching Tackle Talk Live today. We appreciate each and every one of you guys and uh, look forward to this doing this each and every week. Kevin and I really enjoy 
bringing y'all this show and, and giving you hopefully some inside information because we're anglers just like you are. We're trying to find, get us a, uh, the secret tips as well as uh, just as much as you are. So, uh, but this segment presented by Pride Rods, Keith Toledo Ben Tackle, and the Lakes Insurance of Nacogdoches, Texas. Kevin, real quick, uh, of course, Dakota Ebear won, Louisiana native won the uh, Toyota Series over there. First win at Rayburn. And uh, tell us a little bit about the results of that tournament. Oh, this was a two day tournament. Uh, day one got uh, canceled because of the wind. So it, everybody fished day one and day two. Uh, everybody fished two days, rather. So Dakota Ebear won it with a total weight of 48.10. He had 16.06 on day one and 32.04 on day two. Uh, overall, Steve, day two was a lot better day um, as far as big weights went. Wyatt Frankens finished second with 47.05. He had 28 pounds on day, uh, day two as well. Tater Reynolds uh, had 42.09, uh, 26 on day two. Jason Bonds finished fourth with 35-14. Marshall Hughes, fifth, 34-10. Uh, River Lee, sixth, 32-02. On down the line, 10th place. It took For 10th place, it took 49-02. So the weights fell really hard. First place, 48. Second place, 47. Third place, 42. Fourth place, 35 or 36, really. Um, so weights fell hard after first, second, and third place. What did it take to get a check? Uh, oh, I got it right here. Uh, 22.11. Yes, yes. Uh, basically 11 and a half pounds a day. Got you a check. That's what that's what surprised me a little bit. Uh, those kind of weights being down. And again, uh, I guess the water uh, temperature has changed, had some fronts come through. And been the best of weather over at Raven and some high winds from the day first day too. So, uh, but those you're talking guys that know how to catch fish over there in that circuit. Yeah, and like I said, Steve, the, and that was the first week we just got that cold snap came through that week. Uh, a lot of rain, mud, wind. Those guys got a hard curveball thrown at them, and uh, it was tough. It, it made it really tough over there. They are starting to group a little bit more, as you can tell by the bigger stringers, but. There's just not many groups as of yet. There's just not many stringers being caught of that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, real quick, we'll go over the uh, – here's the final results of the Outlaw Outdoors. It was the team tournament trail number one for this circuit. And, of course, as we just had on, Danny Isles, Brian Shook, uh, had a, uh, they had a 1065 kicker uh, to go with their 41.56 pounds of fish. They uh, guaranteed them $8,000. So a uh, good financial win for those two guys. And the two guys we've had on the show the last two weeks, uh, Michael Fesco and Holden Ashworth, uh, they came in second with 19.38. And, yeah, you heard that right. A 22-pound difference between first and second. They won $3,500. And uh, so their, their, banking account, their bank account continues to grow, Kevin. Uh, Ronnie Wagnon, uh, excuse me, Richie Wagnon and Greg Green, they finished third with 19.15. Uh, Lindy Hadley, he fished by himself. He had five fish that weighed 18. It looks like 18.84. Uh, Steve Diller, Danny Cross were uh, fit, or fourth with 17.30. Then was Cullen Newman, Justin Cryer. They were 16.98. And going on down the list here, uh, let's see, to get a check. Uh, looks like the last check. Well, trying to raise it up here. Let's see here. Uh, looks like that was uh, 25th place. That was Reggie Riviera and Danny Golden. 12.28 got you $500 in this event. And uh, so congratulations to all you guys. Uh, the money was well spread out. They did a good job. Good payouts uh, for, yep. the, for this circuit. I, I like the circuit outdoors and uh, they do a great job on that circuit, Kevin. They do, and their payouts went up this year, doing a lot better job. Um, as far as the payouts go, they, you know, they're paying down a lot more, paying out a lot better, so hats off to them. Uh, yes, Steve, it's, it's been tough over there, you know, and it's going to be interesting what the next couple of weekends holds over there. Um, looking forward to the next two weekends on Toledo Bend. Looking forward to seeing the weights coming off Toledo Bend this coming weekend, the BFL. Week after next is Bass Champs. Um yeah, I predict. I, I don't know. BFL, it might not take as much, but that Bass Champ, Steve, is going to take some weight to win that thing. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and a lot of tens got caught on Toledo Bend the past week. A lot, like four or five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so if and and speaking of, of, there's one more tournament trail coming up. The next big, I guess, Sam Rayburn event. Unless there's a big high school event coming up in the next two weeks. The next big event is the Texas Teen Trail, February 18th, out of Sam Rayburn. Uh, and of course, that's usually out of Humphreys Pavilion. So, uh, Rayburn may get a little bit of a reprieve here for a couple of weeks, but there's always something going there's on. There's a tournament, I promise you. Yeah, there's a tournament, probably two or three. So, uh, uh, lake levels, real quick, let me give you an update on that, guys, so you'll kind of get an idea of what's going on. And this may be affecting the fishing at Rayburn. It's at 161.75. It's only now, because it was over three and a half feet low when I was there, it's only 2.65 feet low now. 10 day rise of 1.05 feet. Still coming up. It's come up 2.28 inches in the last 24 hours. So the, all the rain we're getting, uh, especially north of there, off that I-20 corridor, that water's now starting to come down. And that's also feeding Toledo Bend, which is at 169.67. It's only oh. two, yeah, it's only 2.04 feet low. Uh, that There may be some water actually in some uh, bushes that are a little farther out in the lake. You may have water on those. Uh, that's a 10-day gain of 1.34 feet. And they are still generating. So they're uh, generating 24 hours Toledo Bend. Uh, and like I said, I think it's a good thing. I think it's keeping yeah. our grass healthy at Toledo. You know, um, so you. But they're they're pulling it back down on Toledo, and I think they'll continue to do that, especially with some more rain coming in the forecast. Yeah, I would totally agree. And uh, one more thing before we let everybody uh, let you go, uh, sign up for the Southwest Division Solo 150 Tour. It's a $600 per event entry fee. The first term of the year, March 17th and 18th on Sam Rayburn out of Castle Boykin. And uh, Chris Wayan is your tournament director. Go to ABA, uh, American Bass dot com to sign up for that particular uh, circuit and uh they also got the open series but uh, if you're interested the solo 150 is really going to be a great circuit this year sam rayburn lake of the pines and fleet of being three awesome bodies of water in our neck of the woods so should have a great turnout for for all three of those kevin agree all right sign up bass cash bass if you have not yeah. got signed up yet bass cash bass.com going on uh, right now at Sam Rayburn. Make yep. sure you get signed up for Toledo Bend. It's going to be starting soon. Yep, I think March 1 is when it kicks yep. off, so uh, get ready, uh, guys. But if you're going to Rayburn, do not be that guy that didn't sign up because uh, you're going to miss out on some really good prizes. Even if it's an old tag, you're still going to win a nice prize package. Maybe sunglasses, it may be a rod, maybe a reel, but uh, they're going to get you something. So uh, in, enjoy and make sure you turn in your tags. So, uh, all right, that's going to wrap us up. We appreciate each and every one of you guys for tuning us in. Please check us out on our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or podcast. Again, if you'd like to become a member of our sponsorship team, please message us on our Facebook page. We will make sure Kevin will send you out a packet with all the details. For Kevin Jean, you're truly Steve Graff. Thanks for tuning us in. We'll see you next week right here with more Tackle Talk Live.